Okay, hello students. This is part two of our video where we're going to add and subtract um, numbers in scientific notation when the exponents are different. Um, this is a continuation of video one um, of when the exponents are the same. Um, but in this session, we're going to talk about when the exponents are different. So when you're adding or subtracting numbers in scientific notation, um, keep in mind the exponents, they must be the same. If they are different, you must move the decimal so that they will have the same exponent. You have to make them the same. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so when we're moving, when we're moving the decimal, it does not matter which number you decide to move the decimal on, but remember that in the end, both numbers have to have the same exponent on the 10. So whatever the power is for one, it has to be the same on the other um, expression. But keep this rule in mind at the bottom. Exponents go up. If you move, um, if you go up, your exponent has to move to the left. If you go down, you must move to the right. So up means I'm going to increase. That means I'm going to go from 10 to the second power to 10 to the third. So that means I'm going to move my decimal to the left. If I go down, means I'm, meaning I'm going to move from 10 to the third to 10 to the second. If you go down or you decrease, you must move your decimal to the right. So if you keep this rule in mind, then you would do just fine. You have to remember this rule as you're making your steps and as you're changing your, um, if your exponents are different, when you make that change, you have to remember this rule. Okay, so we're going to do a couple examples, um, but keep in mind that you remember your steps. You're going to rewrite so the exponents are the same. Once your exponents are the same and you have moved your decimal or your coefficient, you can then add or subtract the decimal and then you bring down the exponents because at that point they're the same. If it's not, if your coefficients are not in scientific notation form, that means you're going to place the decimal after the digit that's between 1 and 10. You're going to make it in scientific in scientific notation form. Okay, so we're going to keep on. Um, this is the hint from the previous screen. It's just reworded in a different way, and it basically states if you're using the smaller exponent, you're going to move the decimal to the right. If you're using the larger exponent, you're going to move the decimal to the left. So keep this rule in mind. You may want to highlight it because you're going to use this rule as you work your examples. Okay, so the first example, um, it's four and 12 hundredths times 10 to the sixth power plus three and 94 hundredths times 10 to the fourth power. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna decide what you're gonna do. If you're gonna make them smaller, both smaller, or you're gonna go with the bigger number. So you're gonna decide if I'm gonna make them both 10 to the fourth power or 10 to, to the sixth power. So I'm gonna give you two examples where you're gonna go to the smaller number and then I'm gonna give you two examples where you're gonna go to the larger number. You choose which option you wanna take. Okay, so in this example, if you're using a smaller exponent, you're going to move your decimal to the right. We're going to use the smaller number. So that means we're going to make 10 to the 6th power. We're going to decrease it um, to 10 to the 4th. So if only change the coefficient of the expression that you have reduced or increased your exponent. So I'm only going to change 4 and 12 hundredths. Okay, so because I decreased it, I'm making it smaller, I'm going to move my decimal to the right. But you only move it the number of places that you've reduced your exponent. So I'm reducing it two places. So that means I'm gonna move from four and 12 hundredths, I'm gonna move it two digits, two places to the right, which makes it 412. I'm gonna rewrite my expression, so now that both of my exponents are the same. So now I have 412 times 10 to the fourth power plus three and 94 hundredths times 10 to the fourth. Now that my exponents are the same, I can proceed and add my decimals, or you can say your coefficients. 
So once you add them, you're going to a line. Keep in mind, 412 is a whole number. There's an invisible decimal after that two, so you, that two will, will be placed over the three because you have to align. You can use zeros as placeholders. So when you add, you have the same amount of digits at the top and the bottom. Once you add 412 plus 3 and 94 hundredths, that gives you 415 and 94 hundredths. Keep in mind, this is not in scientific notation form. 415 is greater than 10. Remember the rule, you're going to place the decimal after the digit that falls between 1 and 10. So we're going to place the digit after the 4, but before the 1. So it gives you four and 15 <clears throat> hundreds. Okay, so keep in mind, we're moving two digits to our left. When you move two digits to the left, you're gonna add those two digits to your exponent. So that's gonna make your answer four and 15 hundreds times 10 to the sixth power. That is your final answer. I'm gonna do a couple more examples. Um, I do advise you to watch the video um, watch the video if you need to watch it again that's fine just watch it as many times as you need i've also included some links where you can watch other videos um but to get a better understanding you're going to have to spend a little time with um adding and subtracting exponents um, adding and subtracting scientific notation with same and different exponents okay so the next example we're going to also go with the smaller exponent we have 4 and 23 hundredths times 10 to the third power. Now we're going to subtract um, 9 and 56 hundredths times 10 to the second. So again, your first rule would be to determine, am I going to go with the smaller exponent or the larger exponent? In this example, we're going to go with the smaller exponent again. So if I'm using the smaller exponent, that means I'm going to reduce 10 to the third power to 10 to the second power. I'm going down one digit. So when I go down one digit, I'm going to move my decimal one place to the right. So it's going to only change the expression of the exponent that you're changing. So 4 and 23 hundredths, I'm going to move one place to the right, which will make it 42 and 3 tenths. You're going to rewrite it so that now that your exponents are the same. And if you look at the example, in the second bullet, my exponents are the same. So when I subtract, you make sure you align your decimals. When you align them and you subtract 42 and 3 tenths, you're going to subtract 9 and 56 hundredths from that. That gives you 32 and 74 hundredths. Okay, so if you look at your answer, it is not in scientific notation form because 32 is larger than 10. So I have to make it in scientific notation. So I'm going to move my decimal one place to my left because you have to place your decimal after the digit that falls between 1 and 10. When I move it one digit to the left, I'm going to increase my exponent by one digit. So my final answer is 3 and 27 hundredths times 10 to the third power. Okay. So in this next example, we're going to use the larger number. This is example three. So we have 2 and 46 hundredths times 10 to the sixth power. We're going to add that to 3 and 4 tenths times 10 to the third power. So now we're going to make both of our decimals the same. We're going to go with the six. So that means I have to determine how many digits do I need to move to make 10 to the third power 10 to the sixth. It's three digits. Now, when I go with the larger exponent, keep in mind, I'm going to move my decimal only on the expression that I'm changing. So 3 and 4 tenths, I'm going to move three places to my left which is going to make it 34 ten thousandths. So I'm going to rewrite my problem, my expression. I have a new problem. I'm going to rewrite it where both, now my exponents are 10 to the sixth power. Now I can go ahead, because they're the same, I can proceed and add my decimals. You make sure you align those decimals when you add them. And that answer is 2 and 4,634 ten thousandths. Now, make sure your answer is in scientific notation form. It is because two falls between one and 10. Place your decimal after the digit between one and 10. So because it does, I can go ahead and bring down 10 to the sixth power and that's your final answer. Okay, so in the last example, we're gonna do another one where we actually increase and use the larger um, exponent. So this time we have positive and negative exponents. So 
<clears throat> this is going to bring back previous knowledge. You have to use your previous knowledge of adding and subtracting integers. Um, integers is negative and positive numbers. So keep in mind, you're going to use a number line. So if you struggle with adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers, you can actually always use a number line or you can picture a number line as you move your um, as you move your places from either you're going to add or subtract, you can use your number line as a template. So if I'm using my number line, I have a positive three and I have a negative one. Okay, so you have two ways you can actually determine what your exponent is going to be. You want it to be positive three, but you want to make sure that you're adding and subtracting correctly. So in order to make both 10 to the third power, just picture a number line. If you're starting at negative one on that number line, you need to reach positive three. You have to include that zero in your count. If you go from negative one to, to three, you're going to only get three digits. So just picture that number line and make sure you're including that zero in your count. Because if you look at a number line and you move, um, count the number of places you move to get to positive three, you move four places. So you're gonna look at negative one plus four. And you can also remember the rule when you're adding and subtracting integers. If they're different signs, I'm gonna subtract. So four minus one is three, and I'm gonna take the sign of the larger number. Four is larger than one, so it's going to be a positive three. And that's another way you can make sure your calculation is correct to get 10 to the third power. So now we're going to rewrite it so that both of our exponents are the same and they're 10 to the third power. Um, so we actually move, because we're increasing, we're going to move our decimal to the left. Keep that rule in mind. When you're increasing or you're going with the larger number, you're going to move that decimal to the left. Okay, so moving that decimal to the left, we're going to change 2 and 65 hundredths. We're going to move four places to the left. Once we do that, now our exponents are the same. We can actually subtract the decimals. Make sure you align them when you subtract the decimals. And that leaves you with 5 and 762 thousandths. Because it's written in scientific notation, five falls between one and 10. You're gonna place your decimal after the digit that is between one and 10. And then you're gonna just bring down 10 to the third power and that's your final answer. Okay, so here's a couple examples. Um, we're gonna add, they have different exponents. So you're gonna, um, plus means we're gonna add them. So keep in mind, if we're going with the smaller, which is two. So if you're going with the smaller, that means you're going down. You're gonna decrease 10 to the third power to 10 to the second power. So when you're going down, you're gonna to move to the right. So I'm gonna make seven, it's gonna actually now be 70, okay? So I'm gonna add 70 plus two, and that gives me 72. But keep in mind, 72 times 10 to the second power is not in scientific notation form. So I have to make it in scientific notation form. I need to move one place to my left, and that's going to give you seven and two tenths. But when I move one place to the left, I'm going to add one to my exponent, and that makes it 10 to the third power. So C would be your final answer. Okay, same thing with this example. Um, your answer would be A, seven and 45 hundredths times 10 to the fifth. This one you're going to subtract. Okay, so guys, keep in mind, these are your rules. The important thing to remember about adding or subtracting, the exponents have to be the same. If, if they're not the same, you have to make them the same by applying your rule. And that rule is, if you're going to go with the larger exponent or I'm going to go up, I'm going to move to the left. If I'm going to go with the smaller exponent, means I'm going to move down, you're going to move that decimal to the right. So what I need you to do is um, go into week two of our third nine week folder. Um, there's some, there's two quizzes on um, adding and subtracting in scientific notation with different exponents. And then there's um, complete those two assignments. Um, so you have a total of four assignments that you need to complete this week. Um, just to give you that practice that you need for these um, so that you'll be ready next week when you take the quiz. There is a scientific notation process quiz that 
I don't want you to take it, make an attempt on it until you've actually watched this video. So I want you to watch video one, which is adding and subtracting with the same exponent. And then this is a continuation, which is video two, when the exponents are different. If you watch the video and you're, and you're working through the, the quizzes in class and you have questions, just feel free to email me or on, like I stated in the previous video, on Friday of this week, which is January um, the 15th, I am going to log in um, on my even classes and just, just um, say hello and answer any questions that you may have before you take any assessments. And then on Tuesday, Monday is a holiday. Keep that in mind. That's Martin Luther King birthday. And then on Tuesday will be the odd classes. I will actually log in fifth and seventh period again to say hello and to answer any questions that you may have. Keep in mind, I want you to work on the celebrity project. Um, with the celebrity project, again, um, you're going to research using www.google.com. I want you to research five celebrities of your choice. Give me their net worth. Um, that's how much they're worth. And then I want you in the third column to convert that net worth to scientific notation. I did an example for you. I used Beyonce and all I put in the Google search was Beyonce's net worth. She's, a, she's worth 400 million. And I basically just converted that into scientific notation. If you submit the celebrity project early, it's due February the 8th. If you submit it early, I'm giving five points. If it's submitted this week or next week, Anytime after next week, I'm not giving additional points because that's not considered early. Um, if you have any questions about the Celebrity Project, you can email me. You can actually turn it in through email or you can submit it through Schoology. If you don't have any questions for me, um, you have a great day. And um, I will see you on Friday and or Tuesday. Have a nice day.